Well, hello, and thank you for coming to today's webinar. I'm Dr. Janet Six, Senior Product Manager here at Tom Sawyer Software. And today we're going to be talking about some of the new features that were just released in Perspectives 11.0. So first of all, a few sentences about what Perspectives is and what it can do. Tom Sawyer Perspectives is an SDK and low-code graph visualization and analysis development platform with integrated design and preview interfaces and extensive API libraries that allow developers to quickly create custom applications that intuitively solve big data problems. So how do we do that? Let's take a little look. So Perspectives is a graph platform. And the first step when we need to create an application is to connect to data. So we can federate data across the enterprise and we can simultaneously connect to data types, uh, databases of several types. Once we've done that and we federated the data into a, a very efficient native graph model, then we can process the data um, by applying transformations and filters. Uh, and then we can uh, uh, have interactive views of several types. As you see here, we have including drawing views and map views. We have table views, chart views, and others as well. So for today, we're going to discuss several things that were just released as part of Perspectives 11.0. First, we're going to look at the ability for users to query graph databases interactively in an application without the need to know Gremlin or Cypher. We're also going to look at the new magnifier tool, which is configurable. This will allow users to see even more details in graph visualizations. Then we're going to look briefly at improved hierarchical layout for nested drawings and the ability to sort dis disconnected nodes into a grid structure. And we're also going to look at new capabilities that will speed the deployment of scalable applications to Docker, Kubernetes, and Terraform environments. During today's demo, we will show how to deploy into Docker uh, desktop running locally. Okay, great, thank you. So before I go to the next step, I think that I heard uh, some keyboard clicking. Uh, if somebody does not mind to uh, please mute. Thank you. Okay, so the first feature that we're going to look at here today is the new query builder. And this is going to give the capability to your end users to, to um, build queries without the need to know the Gremlin or Cypher graph database query languages. So let's take a look at an example. So I have opened a uh, application that I've been building here in the Perspectives Designer, which is our low code development environment. And um, we have already predefined some things here. Over here on the left side, you're going to see the story of our application. You're going to see the schema, which is going to define what the uh, data elements are that we uh, expect uh, to find in our graph database. Um, we're also, um, let me show here the attributes while we're here. Um, so we have, uh, let me zoom in. So we have lots of different kinds of information in this data source, um, which is working with some uh, data about music. Okay, so continuing here on the left side, we also have the integrators. In today's case, we're going to connect to a Tinkerpop uh, compatible database. Then we have the domains, which those act upon uh, as a filter on the graph model. Uh, and if you want to know more about domains, you can uh, look into some of our videos on the uh, on our YouTube channel. And we have the drawing templates, which is um, going to tell us what are the nodes going to look like in our graph visualizations. Are we going to have squares or circles? What kind of colors? Are we going to use pictures? Um, all kinds of things like that. And in fact, we do have a, a YouTube video if you want to learn more about that. Then we have graphs and analyzers. So this is the way that we can apply graph analysis uh, to the application. We're not going to do that today, uh, but that is here uh, possible in perspectives. 
Then um, we have several views defined for this particular application. We have a drawing view, so we can see the graph, and we also have table views and inspector views, which are going to show us um, a detailed um, uh, a view of the types of attributes that we have for each element um, that are that we want to show in this uh, particular visualization. Then we have the uh, tree views. Um, and um, a second table view, again, to show the, um, the details that we want to in today's example. Um, we have also capabilities to do filtering and searching in each one of the views. Um, we uh, don't need to use those today, but you're, uh, you can go to the YouTube channel and you can see we have a, a search video. And we'll have one on filtering soon. And then we have down here tags, uh, which can be used to help find elements in the model quickly, and the view layout, which is where we create the dashboard uh, type view for uh, our application. And we'll see the results of that in just a moment. Okay, so now we want to add a query builder to our application so our end user can bring more results into our application without having to know how to use a database query language. So let's do that. We're going to add this query builder capability to our drawing view. So I'm going to open up the drawing view and we're going to go to behavior and we're going to go to toolbars and we're going to open up the default toolbar. This is where we're going to add an icon which is used to invoke the action to open the query build. So let's do that. I'm going to right click here on items and I'm going to say add item and it's going to uh, give us an option of which kind of item do we want to add. I want to add the query builder so I'll select that. Now it's going to ask us a couple of questions here. So it's going to first of all say well which integrator do you want to work with? We have one integrator in, um, in our application so I'm going to select that. And we're also allowed to set uh, maximum and default limits so that the application doesn't bring in too much data at one time. Uh, so anyway, we'll hit OK. And now we're going to see there, there's our new query builder that we just added. So let's go open the web preview um, of our application so we can see what the application is going to look like uh, when it's deployed. So I'm going to run web preview. And we're going to see all of those views that we just talked about. Um, so we have our drawing view over here. We have our tree view. Um, this area down here is the inspector. So when I select an item, it's going to give me the details uh, about that particular item. And then down here, we have our tables views. We have two of them, uh, one for songs and one uh, over here for artists. And so we can um, see summaries of the information if we want. Uh, we also can take advantage of all of these views being synchronized, meaning that if I go through the table and decide that I want to um, go to this particular item, I can click on it and it will take us to that item in the drawing view. And you see that is also highlighted over here in our tree view as well. And so this also works for um, the, uh, the tree view as well. We can click and it will take us to uh, the right area of the drawing. Okay, so now let's go and use our query builder because we want to add more elements to our graph drawing here. So I'm going to choose the query builder icon that we just added. I'm going to open the query builder and in this case um, we are going to um, instead of looking for an artist we're going to look for a certain song and here's where we're going to define the conditions where we're going to um, bring in more information from the tinkerpop database so in this case we are going to want to look for the song type and then we say is or we can also choose some of these other qualifiers, is, is not, contains, and so on. But we're going to say is original. We're going to leave this query limit at 100. So at most, we'll bring in 100 elements um, of type uh, song, which has a song type original. OK, let's see what happens. So I'm going to press OK. 
is going to do the graph database right now. And it tells, tells me that it successfully executed the query. And here are those new elements that were added. All right, so now we're going to go on to our next feature, which is the magnifier. So I'm going to open our crime network demo, um, which you can see on the Tom Sawyer website if you go to the industries page. Uh, so what we have here in this drawing is that we have um, a set of criminals and crimes. So we have, for example, two people here that stole a car. Okay, so now sometimes um, we need to have the original data like we have in the original data source. In this case, we're looking at criminals and crimes and attributes based on those. But sometimes we need to know something else. So with perspectives, we have the capability to compute new graphs. So for example, let's say in this case, you know, what we really want to know is the social network. We don't want to see two nodes and the car that's stolen. What we want to see are these two people that are connected directly because they committed a crime together. So with perspectives, we can compute that graph and we have here in the people network. And so here we're looking at just the criminals and they're connected if they have committed a crime together. Okay, so now let's, um, let's reduce the size of this graph a little bit by applying a little analysis quickly. So we're going to apply a betweenness centrality. So we're going to find some of those key elements in our network. I'm going to turn off our animation here and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right, and let's say that we want to focus in on a particular part of this network. So we're going to choose this node and this node. And we're going to set those as a hop start, which means that what we want to do is see other criminals that are closely connected to these two criminals. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change the number of hops to three. Here we go. And we're going to perform a reachability analysis. So again, we're just wanting to find just the part of the network we need. We want to understand who's close to these two people of interest. So I'm going to say, okay. And as you see here, we've reduced the size of our visualization to just the part that we need to see now. Okay, so let's apply a different layout while we're here. So I'm going to use our new bundle layout. This is actually the same visualization. We just have this new layout style here, which is able to put um, uh, or bundle several edges that are related into the same, the same uh, visual edge. And we want to know a little bit more about what's going on here. It's kind of a little hard to see. Hmm. Well, we have our new magnifier capability. So let's go ahead and use that. So I'm just going to hover over this part of the graph and I'm going to press the space bar and now we can see more details of who these people are and what's and who are they're connected to. We also can select nodes and edges in this capability. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select this node and over here it's going to pop up that information in the inspector. So this magnifier can be used as part of the select tool that we just uh, did. It also can be available as a separate icon on the toolbar. So whichever is appropriate for your use case. This type of magnification works with the graph visualizations that we see here in the drawing view, and it also works with the map view. So I'm gonna come over here to our incidents map. So this is where we're seeing you know, where are the crimes uh, actually happening? Uh, so I'm going to zoom in a couple of times. Let's go in a little bit closer. And we can see more details. Again, I'm going to hover. I'm not clicking. I'm just hovering and I press the space bar. And we can see more details in the map view. Okay, very good. All right, so um, now I'm going to go on to the next feature we wanted to cover today here in the uh, the new 11.0 features. Uh, so I am going to um, go back to the designer 
and we're going to open an event analysis example application that we built with perspectives. And so this is shipped with perspectives. And so uh, if you are a customer or if you want to start a free evaluation, then you can also use this event analysis example. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to open this example. Okay, good. And um, so um, what we're going to do here is that we want to deploy this application. So let's talk a little bit about deployment. So overall, the offering of, of cloud application hosting uh, providers consists of just two hosting mechanisms. The first one is native compute. So each major cloud provider is going to offer mechanisms to start up servers out of cloud provider specific images of an operating system. And to simplify the deployment process, each cloud provider is going to have their own API to automatic provisioning, starting, and destroying cloud resources. Terraform offers a unified set of commands to call strips that use these APIs that are developed and tested for each cloud provider. So native deployments are good for robust, vertically scalable, one-off deployments. The other main hosting mechanism is containers. So containers are going to standardize packaging, execution, and sharing of full operating system images, which enable consistent workflows across environments and facilitate the management of multi-component infrastructure setups. A container image is going to bundle a form of Linux and its state, which is going to include installed packages, process startup sequence, and a file system. And it can be deployed inside any Docker compatible environment. And it can work with a container orchestration platform such as Kubernetes. So containers are good for automated, dynamic, and horizontally scalable systems made of a small number of fast and stateless services. So today we're going to deploy this application, our event analysis example. We are going to deploy that to Docker running locally. Okay, so how are we going to do that? All right, so the first step that we're going to do is we're going to apply um, here in the designer, we're going to apply this generate web application code. All right, and so here um, it is um, asking us, well, where do you want to put these generated files and what are the Maven coordinates and the other Maven information so we can build the application? So I gave a, a new um, project ID and gave uh, information about the necessary Maven coordinates and where the files are going to go. And I'm gonna press okay. And it's going to tell us that the files have been successfully created. So now let's go take a look. All right, so I'm going to open our folder window. I'm going to go to that part with the files. So we're looking here in the examples. As you can see here, we have a lot of examples. And many of these categories actually have many examples within those categories. We're going to go to event analysis today. And here you see the application folder. This is where we just created those new files. So the um, application code generation created us not only the files, but it created a readme so we know what to do with the files. So our first step is going to be to build the application with Maven. So I open the readme file here, and it's going to give me instructions about how to set up Maven and how to run the build. So we need to um, open a terminal window here at this directory. So I'm going to say open a new terminal. Okay, and we're going to make this nice and, and big. All right, and it's going to um, give us the instruction that we need right here. So we're going to do this Maven command. Let's see, we're gonna watch the, uh, the uh, application build here. Okay, good, it's successful. And you can see that special name that we just gave in the, uh, the designer. Uh, so it is uh, configurable um, uh, you know, at the time that you're using the designer. Okay, so we've had a build success. Now we're ready for the next step. 
So I'm going to close this readme file because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to close this, um, this terminal window because we don't need that anymore. We're going to go over to deployment. Okay, so you'll see here, there's directories for Docker, Kubernetes, and Terraform. And so we have created the files needed to help speed deployment of the application to those environments. So we're going to work with Docker today. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start my Docker desktop. Okay, so you can see that there's no running containers. We have no containers running right now, so keep an eye on that because that will change. All right, we're going to also open our readme file because we want the instructions of what we need to do here. Second, it's going to tell us um, information that we need. So first it says, be sure you built the application, which we just did, and then um, make sure we have the correct version of Java. And now we're going to get to deploying the web application. So again, we're going to need to open a terminal window. So I'm going to do that here. All right, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And it's going to give me those commands I need. So first we need to give execution permission to the script that was automatically generated for us. So I'll do a copy and a paste. Oops, I missed a character there. All right. And then we need to actually run the script, which was generated automatically for us by perspectives. All right, good. Good. All right, so keep an eye on what's going on down here. So we're getting ready to start <clears throat> start the container. Okay, so I'm going to hit um, hit return, and then you'll notice very soon that we'll have a container running here down here in the Docker desktop. Okay, good. Okay, ask me for my password. Okay, good, good, and you can see. We now have the Docker container running. So we can look here at the container running uh, in Docker Desktop. We can also run this Docker command and we can uh, look at the uh, container running here as well. All right, so let's, uh, let's go look at this thing running. Uh, let's use this application. All right, so I'm gonna just come over here and I'm going to say, just take me to that link. Let me try that one more time. There we go. It's going to ask me for my credentials. Because we can have authentication on Perspectives applications with OAuth2. And I'm, uh, I'm on WebEx today, so it, it might be running here just a little slow because I'm currently on WebEx. Okay. So here is our event analysis example application. It's running locally here uh, in my Docker desktop. So, uh, so while we're here, um, what are we looking at? So we're looking at an event system and we're doing a post analysis to understand what happened, what events led to other events in our system. So we here, see here some green nodes. These are actors and the yellow nodes, which are events that they spawned or they responded to, given the type of edge that we see. And what do these columns mean? The columns are representing time. So these particular events, they happened on a certain day or in a certain hour or a certain minute, depending on whatever time frame that you need. And each column represents the appropriate time frame for your use case. And as we could see here, as time went on, we had some more green nodes, meaning that we had some more actors entering the system. So we can see what happened, when it happened, and who was involved. All right, so we made our application run. Now we can shut off our container. Let's take a look and see how that works. All right, so again, the commands are going to be here in the readme. All right, so going to give me um, the uh, the shell and the command I need to run it. So I'm going to grab this. 
Okay, and let's turn this down a little bit down here so we can see that it's going to disappear. All right, and we're going to grab the name of the script. And you see how it closed the container and it's been shut down. No more container running. <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> So we um, just deployed the application into Docker running locally. Um, we also have uh, readmes and scripts that are for Kubernetes environments that are going to work with the Docker containers and into a Terraform uh, environment in AWS EC2. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go on to our next um, uh, part and that is about some interesting work that we've done in layout. So I'm going to look at uh, two today. So the first one is our improvements in hierarchical layout. So uh, what we have here is a communications network, and we have these boxes here, which represent a what we call a parent node, meaning that you can put an entire graph into a node, which is what we've done here. And you'll see um, that we uh, will draw all of the edges coming out of a particular parent node and going into another. So we have this nested drawing capability, but we do not lose details of what's happening in elements between nested drawings. And so we have improved this capability so that we have fewer edge crossings in some of these inter-drawing edges. We also did some work with disconnected nodes, and we added the ability to sort into grid. So let's take a quick look at that. So I'm going to go back to the designer, and I'm going to open uh, an example application for that. Okay, good. All right, so let's uh, let's take a quick look at this application. All right, so what we have here is a warehouse um, with boxes. And we need to get the boxes on these trucks. And I'm not going to um, show all of the capabilities of this example, but you can do that. Um, and this is shipped with perspectives. Okay, so this is what we call the compact um, packing of the disconnected nodes, because sometimes you want things to take up a, a small amount of space. And so that's what we have here, the small amount of space. But sometimes you have a use case where you need to have some structure up how are the boxes laid out? Where can be they, they be placed? And so a grid structure can be useful for that to help understand what kind of boxes we have and where and which ones need to be loaded onto the truck sooner in, in this use case. So let's see how we can apply um, this type of uh, disconnected node sorting into a grid. All right, so we're gonna come over here, back to the designer, and we're working with the drawing view. So I'm gonna come over here to the definition of the drawing view. And here we're going to add some instructions saying sort those disconnected nodes into a grid. So I'm gonna add an action, layout properties, sort disconnected nodes. Okay, so it's gonna ask us here a, a name for this action. We're just gonna take the default. Now it's gonna ask me, which graph do you want to apply this to? So I'm going to click reference and I'm going to say just the root drawing for this one. Um, and then here down at the bottom, you see the packing. So right now you see that we have compact selected, which is what we just saw uh, in our preview. I'm going to change this to grid. But remember that we are doing a sorting. So we need to define what are we sorting on? So I'm going to come over here to the comparator and we can pick several options here. We can do a sorting alphabetically or we can do it based on a particular attribute, either ascending or descending. So we're going to pick an ascending order by attribute. But which attribute will we get to pick? So I'm going to come over here to this drop down and you're going to see here the type of attributes that we can sort on. So I'm going to sort by package weight. And then we have an option to sort by columns or rows. So we're going to go ahead and keep the columns and I'm going to select OK. Now let's go to the preview of our application. So this is the same graph that we just saw, but now we have a different kind of sorting. And so 
This is uh, for certain use cases where you need to have a certain structure for the boxes themselves or for the disconnected nodes themselves. We have several ways that we can do this sorting into grid as we were just looking at the options. You can sort by column row, you can do it alphabetically, you can do it by different attributes. So you get to pick what is appropriate for your use case. All right, so um, we uh, talked about four features today. We, we talked about the query builder and the magnifier, and the deploy application, and the uh, new and updated layout features with improved hierarchical layout for nested drawings and for disconnected nodes being sorted into a grid. There is more um, that was done in the 11.0 uh, release. Uh, we included having improved memory management when signing off a Perspectives application built with Spring Boot. We also improved default settings in the RDF integrator. Uh, as well as improving the position of edge labels in bundle layout. And we had several quality improvements in our business process product as well. Uh, so you can go to the Tom Sawyer website. And if you go to the bottom here, you will have an option um, of looking at the release notes. And you can see more details about what was in the 11.0 release. Um, and while you're here uh, on the Tom Sawyer website, I encourage you to uh, go to our new technology menu where we have much more information about the, um, the types of problems that we solve for our customers with the Perspectives platform. So you can come over here and, and do some more uh, looking and understand more about what, um, what happens with Perspectives and how it can help you to reach your objectives. So thank you for joining us today. Um, today's webinar showed us many capabilities of the Perspectives Graph platform uh, that were new or updated in the 11.0 release. You can see our YouTube channel for more how-to videos and also a recording of this webinar as well. And please contact us today at tomstory.com to start your free trial of Perspectives or uh, to schedule a call with one of our graph and data visualization experts. We can help guide you to the best solution. Thank you.